Hey guys, it's the Addy Queen, and in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to make a heart duplicate stitch Valentine's Day beanie. Um, you're going to need a yarn needle, pair of scissors, the color you're using for your brim lining inside, outside of the toboggan. My whole toboggan is going to be this textured gray. You're going to need the color for your heart. I'm using purple. And then I'm also going to outline my heart in black. So the beginning of this is pretty simple. We are just going to cast on here. And you don't need a super long tail. We're just making a standard beanie. We've reset our row counter here. Now, I am making this adult size, which means I'm going to do 100 rows. Oh, there's a knot in my yarn. 100 is what I usually do for adults. It seems to be a pretty safe number for me because the hats that are knit on the Addy Centro, whatever machine you're using, tend to stretch a bit. And so if you have an adult with a bit of a smaller head, it's not obnoxiously large. But if your head's pretty standard, 100 rows usually fits. Now, if I'm doing this like for a man, I would do maybe 120 just to be on the safe side, but 100 is usually my standard number. If you are wanting to do a faux brim with like a different colored outside, I would do 60 rows for your lining and brim color and then 40 for your other color, but I'm just doing solid gray for this one, so I'm going to do 100 rows and then I will get back on here and show you guys how to do our pattern. So as you can see, I finished my 100 rows, so we're going to take a yarn needle and put it on our tail here. And I usually just stick it somewhere in the work. Now we're gonna run this through once with no yarn in the feeder. And now we're going to come over here and we are just going to pick up every single stitch. When I do this, I don't know why. This is just a habit I have. I like to move the ring of the machine with my left hand. That way I don't have to go all the way around the machine. I can just work with my right hand in the same area. Oh, almost lost that one. Go ahead and pull this. I enjoy Fair Isle because most of the work is done after your project is off of the machine. Pull this. I just find it easier that way. I'm not sure why. This is just my preference. You could do designs with Fair Isle, which is working your design into the actual knitting. But I find duplicate stitch to be a little bit easier. All right, we got this off. And I'm gonna move my machine out of the way. I'm gonna bring over our yarn and our little pattern. So this is pretty standard here. We're tightening this up. Now we're gonna go over here to our cast on and tighten it up as well. As you tighten it up, you want to tuck the guts of your work into the inside. Now we're going to tuck this inside of here. We're going to go through the very center right here. See it's pretty loose. I'm going to flip this to where we can see the inside and you see my needle came up right here but we want it in the center so I'm going to pick up the center and move it. Perfect. Zoom you guys in a little bit here. 
Now we're going to take these two and tie them together and that will tighten up both of our ends and it will look great. Hello kitty. Now we're going to cut. Now with our fair eye here, you see we're working with two different colors. As the black is an outline for the purple, I think I'm going to go ahead and do the purple first. So we want to get our hat to where it's laying all nice and flat. We're going to take a section of purple here. And you want a decent amount to work with, but you don't want it so obnoxiously long because you have to pull it through every time. We're going to thread it onto our needle. So with duplicate stitching, what you want to do is come up in the center of a stitch. So you kind of pick where your design is. I'm going to put the bottom of my heart right here. Scoot you over a little bit. So we're going to come up. I need to be in the center right here, so I'm a little off. Here we are, we're in the center of a stitch. We're gonna do one stitch at the bottom purple. So we're gonna go through the top of the stitch above it, and then back down through the hole where we just came up. And that, my friends, is a duplicate stitch. Because we have a brand new stitch right on top of the gray one, thus duplicating it, making it a different color. See, so if you pull it too tight, it disappears. So with duplicate stitching, it's really important to keep it loose. So loosen that back up. I just wanted to show you kind of what it looked like if you made it too tight. So I did one stitch at the bottom. That's this stitch. So now my next row, I'm going to do three. Start one stitch over from where we were. So here's one, two, It's important you pull this tight in between every single stitch or things can get kind of messy on the inside. Here's our third one. Now the next row, we're doing five. We're just increasing one more. This kind of a little bit reminds me of embroidery. I know it's not, but it's kind of soothing to just add your stitches on here. There we go, loosen that one up a little. Now this heart can look a little muddled as you're going. That's why I enjoy adding an outline because I feel like it really defines what we're working on. Especially when you do it in black because that color just tends to pop out. Here's our fourth stitch. Here is number five. Here's our next row. We're going to do seven across. Again, just keeping our work nice and loose. Go ahead and pull 
this. There we go. The looser you keep it, the better your duplicate stitches are going to look. Like right here, you see I was a little tight, so you have more gray poking through. But when you're loose, the bottom color does not usually show as much. So as you can see, my thread's getting a little short. That is okay. We're just going to take it off our needle and cut another piece. When I do duplicate stitching, I like to manage all of my ends at the end. That way, you don't have to stress yourself out too much when you're actually working on the project. You just deal with it at the end. So I just did this row of seven. So now we're going to do our row of nine. You know, with duplicate stitching, you can work your rows from up to down or side to side. I don't know why. I just decided to go horizontal this time. It seemed to make more sense for this project. Oh, my end from a different. There we go. I accidentally dug that up with my needle. That's wild, isn't it? Oh, got a little caught here. There we go just from where I left a longer end on the inside. Oh, there's one of my assistants. Get out of here, buddy. I'm busy. All right, we're four stitches in, so we're almost halfway done with this row. So I'm trying to keep this as centered on the camera as I can. My setup's a little bit different than usual. Um, if you're in my Facebook group, you know, this is my first video as a mother. I gave back birth back in December, so I kind of stepped away from YouTube a little bit to spend time with my family and get to know the new little one. And this is my first video back, so... Uh, a bit of a different setup just because I want to be close to the baby to keep an eye on him while I'm filming. Stitch number seven. Now this next row is going to be a bit different because it's not going to be just an increase like we did before. We're actually going to do two separate sections. So I'll finish my ninth stitch here. So instead of increasing and going one stitch farther, we are just going to start right on top of where we're working now. Oops, made that a little tight, didn't I? There we go. We're just gonna go right above, and we're gonna do four stitches, and then we're gonna leave a stitch and do four more stitches. That's one. Two. 
to three. See, now that we're doing this, it's starting to look a little more like a heart. Maybe not. Maybe I'm just envisioning it because I want to. <laughs> All right, here's our fourth one. Now we're going to skip the stitch right here, and we're going to do four more stitches. Loosen that guy up there. We are almost done with the purple, my friends. We only have one more row after this. Which it looks like I'm gonna have to cut another piece of purple. I can't believe it. I was so close too. That's okay. It's better to cut another piece and do it right than to try to make things too tight and just not look good. Okay, so as you can see on our pattern here, we're gonna go in one and just do two, then we're gonna skip three stitches and do two more. So we're going in one, we're not putting a stitch in right here, we're gonna do a stitch in these two right here. So here's one, Make that a little looser. And here is two. I am gonna cut a separate piece of yarn for the two stitches on the other side. Let me pull that down. See, that really does look like a heart, doesn't it? Ooh, it's looking good. Okay. You're doing great. We are almost done, guys. So I just cut another piece, and we're gonna come over here We're just mirroring what we did on the other side. I wanna make sure, there we go. So here's our first stitch. Sorry guys, I accidentally bumped my camera. Uh, we're finishing our first stitch here. And we're gonna go right here and finish our second stitch. Perfect. Now before we do the black, I am going to go inside of my hat and do some management with our ends. That way things don't get too tangled and wonky. So this looks bad, but it's not as bad as it looks, I promise. So first off, we're going to tie these two ends together. That way they support each other and don't unravel. It would be a shame to do so much work on a hat and then it unravel. Oh my goodness, it would just be heartbreaking. I'm going to pull on this here to kind of see what it's attached to. See, this is where I left that really long end. It goes down. Leaving long ends is great just in case you have work to do later on, but sometimes it can be a little bit of a headache when you're doing duplicate stitching. But I enjoy having a longer end just so I don't have to pull my work very tight in order to tie a knot on the inside. So for me, it's worth it to do the little bit of extra work to unravel things in here. Plus it's kind of like a little mind game. There we go. I'm pulling this here. And what we're going to do is cut. And then we're going to pull the other end of it up here. So now we have these two that need tied to each other. We're going to cut this here. That way we can secure this end. And 
now I'm left with two more that I'm going to tie to each other. And then two right here. See, it worked out perfectly. So now we flip it back over, give it a stretch, and that is our heart. Now you could stop here, or if you would like to continue on this journey with me, I am going to add a black outline around the heart to kind of tie it all together. So now I'm going to start on my outline of black got the yarn on my yarn needle and I'm just gonna start down here at the bottom so we're coming up one stitch below where our purple started and we are just outlining it clear around All right, I have finished my black outline, so we're turning it inside out. And again, we are just connecting our ends. I should have four ends here because I used two strands of black yarn. So right here we have, right here we have two ends and we have two ends up there. I'm just going to tie these two and we're going to give it a cut and then we're going to tie the other two together as well. I really enjoy duplicate stitching because once you've done it one time you've done it a million times. It is the same for every single project you work on no matter what design you're making. The only disadvantage is you do have stuff on the inside of your hat. It's not the end of the world. When you're wearing a toboggan, no one's going to see the inside of it. But it is a bit neater when you do a fair aisle stitch. It's really just maker's preference. You can see when I was tying the inside, I did pull this too tight. So sometimes you can go back and loosen that with a yarn needle. 
Um, it can be a little finicky, but you can pull at it a little. It's not perfect, but you can definitely tell what I made. I mean, I would wear it. If you guys would like, I would be willing to do the same design, make another video showing you how to do it in Fair Isle. That is up to you. You know, leave that down in the comments if that's something you'd be interested in. But as for now, this is a little Valentine's Day themed heart hat. You know, what you see is what you get. It's a hat with a heart on it. Nothing too crazy, but I think it's super cute and it gets the message across. I hope that you guys have a wonderful day and happy crafting everyone.